Welcome back to Quainton. We're continuing the mechanical disassembly of 7715. We've got some footage of uh, splitting the crossheads and removing the connecting rod. But before I show you any of that, I'm going to show you because it's a little tricky with a locomotive with inside motion like we have, where everything's hidden inside, to show exactly what we're doing. So I've got Whitewick Hall here behind me, uh, which is sat over the pit awaiting a a uh, couple of springs being changed out for refurbished ones. So I'm just going to take you over there and we will go and have a look at various bits that are more visible on a locomotive with outside cylinders. So let's go and have a look. There we are, a couple of massive leaf springs to change. It's a bit of a job that underneath there. There's not a lot of room to work and they're pretty heavy. But anyway, that's not what we're here to look at. Here we have cylinder. And what we call the crosshead. Now, you can probably see why it's called the crosshead because it's a cross shape. Now, the job of this is basically to support the tail of the piston here, the rod as it's moving backwards and forwards. As you can see, it's quite a long stroke. So at the end of its stroke, if it didn't have the support between the crosshead and the slide bars, it would be dangling around in the air and it would all be over pretty quickly. So unlike a car engine where this joint, and you, it would be called a wrist pin in, in a car, we, we tend to call it the, the small end or little end, would be actually inside the piston. It's a bit different here because uh, car engine the pistons are only single acting so you only end up with uh, with your um, working fluid on one end of them with a steam engine of course they're double acting so steam pushes from this direction and this direction too so we've got this steam tight gland in here which stops all the steam washing out down the piston rod and all this assembly to support it outside We've got the connecting rod here. And that's what we call the big end. As you can see, it's bigger than the little end. This is a bit different to 7715. With these, these are fitted as basically like the, like the coupling rods. I'll show you over here. These are held on. This is just a massive nut. And there's a thread on there that inside there that's the actual crank pin that's set into the wheel so press fit the nut is secured with this pin which is is a shallow taper and that in itself is secured with a split pin so with the nut off you can literally just slide the coupling rod on sat behind the the big end of the connecting rod here but you get the idea there's what we call the gradient pin this is there to allow there's actually a little bit of lateral movement in with steam engine wheels to allow it to go around curves so there's a spherical joint in there which allows the rod to essentially flex in the middle a little bit you can see it's quite long and we have exactly the same thing, exactly the same arrangement. Great Western didn't like innovating when things worked. So there you go, center connection. There's the gradient pin, obviously. Our cylinder is inside, so the connecting rods don't go on the outside of that center driver. The other job the gradient pin has, of course, is to allow when suspension moves, to allow the wheels to move independently. So it's quite an important little joint. It's a pain in the ass to get apart because there's a the end of the, the bolt that goes through there is only secured by a tiny little pin. There's no way to get a spanner on it. So if the nut doesn't really want to come off and the pin doesn't want to take the load, you have a bit of a problem and it's pretty tricky because it's buried in there and yeah, it's a pain. Anyway, I think we've got one tricky one. One of them's come off okay. We'll get some footage of that in, in due course. Anyway, this is why we're here really the big end so like the coupling rods this is just fitted it's the same arrangement slightly bigger though 
big nut. If you slide it on the side, you probably have the, the locomotive in this position because it's quite convenient. You'd have the crosshead push forwards well out of the way, slide it in sideways, and then either move the loco to bring the rod into the crosshead, or you can bar the crosshead back onto the rod. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We don't have that luxury. So, like I said, it's a little bit difficult to see in here, but slide bars and the crossheads inside there. Connecting rod and a set of cranks. The other rod's been removed, I'll show you that in a moment. So we have quite a different big end arrangement here because you can't obviously just slide it on from the side. The big end on a Great Western inside some of the locomotive is in several pieces. So you've got the rod here and that ends about there. There's actually one on the floor there. I think you can maybe just see. There you go. And then there's what we call the horseshoe because it's horseshoe shaped and it wraps right around the back and underneath and it's secured to this connecting rod by these two pins which we've started removing here we've just got them loose these are an interference fit but what we call fitted bolts so the holes will be drilled reamed measured and then the pins made up to match exactly and they're a clever step design but i'll show you that in a minute with the one we've already removed there's also there's a wedge there there's a piece of steel that sits behind it and the wedge is there to keep the two big pieces of bronze that actually form the um, the surface that the bearing journal runs on together. They're, they're a two-piece design because again we have to wrap around because we can't just shove it on from the side. Um, a little bit like a a little bit like a modern car engine uh, in that you have a, a sort of a split design but um, slightly different. So let's go out to the storage wagon and we'll have a look at the disassembled one. Here we go, I've just raked this out of its little spot in the storage wagon. It's uh, awaiting inspection and cleaning. Um, there's a lot of that to do, but there we are. Anyway, I'll give you a sort of bird's eye view of it. There we go. Why well, we call it the horseshoe, because it very much is a horseshoe shape. So there's two pieces of bronze here. Now the bronze doesn't actually form the bearing surface, it gets a, a layer of white metal bonded to it, which you can see is is in slightly rough shape. Um, but so we'll be taking all that off, stripping it back, cleaning it up and putting a nice new layer of white metal on it, machining it. You can just see, it's actually squeezed together at the moment, you can see the wedge there, which isn't pushed fully home. There's a steel backing plate that sits against that. It keeps these two parts together. Provided it's not too warm too much, of course. And you can see inside there, there's a what we call a felt. So that's what actually transfers oil. There's a, a little piece of tin in there that it sits in. It's a real job to get these, these together without squashing that because it, it sort of locates inside there with these little tabs. So when you're fiddling about between the crank webs, it's quite hard to get that that right anyway it transfers oil from the oil point up here there's a cork in the top there that i can't get out at the moment anyway that's this this square part here is hollow it's machined and then there's a i don't know if you'll see there's much light here but there's a it doesn't look like it but there's a cap on there which is fitted in with a very slight chamfered edge and it's just pinged in so that's the the oil reservoir and the felt that transfers it to the to the big end um Replacing these felts is a, is a maintenance job that's a, sort of every so often because they do to get clogged up with gunk eventually and then they don't transfer oil very well and then you're in trouble. There's the pins I was talking about at the front. They're just secured with a couple of nuts at the bottom and some giant um, split pins basically. They're what actually secure the horseshoe to the um, connecting rod. So there you go. You'll see us struggling removing it because it's big and it's heavy and it's awkward like everything else on a steam engine. 
we're trying to remove that wedge that you've just seen in that previous clip here. It shouldn't really be this tight. It should only be sort of lightly tapped in and the, um, the taper, the very slight taper of the wedge holds it in place and keeps the bearing together. I need a bigger hammer. Uh, we later find out that it's wedged in there so tight because somebody's jammed a piece of shim steel behind it to uh, to try and compensate, I think, for, for worn bearings instead of, well, doing it properly. It might look a bit brutal, but hydraulics in this situation are actually a, a good deal more sensitive than beating it with a hammer uphill. You're less likely to ding things you didn't mean to, so we're just going to wind a little bit of pressure up and hope it releases itself. No. Stop right, leave it there. <laughs> Give it a bit of um, bit of, tapping. bit of tapping at the top. Where's the copper man? He's just passing it through, just by your. Uh -huh. There you go. Oh, well, now. It's moved because I can see a gap opening up in the horseshoe at the front, which is great. No, let the pressure off because we don't, the, um, the top of that bolt is obviously stuck in the top. So having moved it a little bit, have another go at the wedge. You might find the wedge will come out and that will release the pressure on it. The, the wedge shouldn't be that tight, but it is, so. Definitely move. It's looking like it's about to move. Yeah, um, give, it another po give it another pull on the um, hydraulics. Whoa! There she blows! <laughs> yep! <laughs> and she's out! Perfect, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> Do you need a fresh pair of pants? I need another pair. Two today. We're going to show two methods here of removing the horseshoe off the um, big end of the connecting rod. Um, we're just removing the pins here, as I've just shown you. Um, once that's done, we'll um, push the horseshoe back with a hydraulic jack here. It's, uh, it doesn't require a lot of force, it's, um, it, it's only a, a sort of a, a, a light interference fit. Um, it's a forged piece of metal and it's been machined so it, it sits around it nicely but it does have a little bit of spring to it. Using the hydraulics is just a, it's got a bit more finesse to it than beating it with a hammer. Uh, it, it's, um, it's a bit easier and a bit quieter. The other method is basically to block the connecting rod from moving and uh, bar the, the whole loco backwards which moves the connecting rod and takes the horseshoe and bearing with it. There he goes, there he goes, that's lovely. Right, do you need to bar the slide by forward? Oh sorry, the crosshead forward. If you can find a convenient place to do so. It's always a battle. So if you lift that up a little bit, there you go, that's it. Keep it, keep pulling it forwards, that's it, lovely. All that dust has set my nose up. You're right. Yeah, no, no, no. There you come. This is the other method used on the other side. We've already removed the pin that holds the connecting rod into the crosshead, but I didn't really get any footage of that because the space is very tight and it just wasn't possible to film it. I'll explain how it all goes together in the next video. The connecting rod's blocked into the crosshead with a piece of wood. The crosshead's blocked from moving by another piece of wood. And we now bar the loco backwards. Okay, and break off. I think it's on with just a very light drag to be fair. Cool. Yeah, which should just stop it rolling on because some of these bits are a bit up and downhill. Okay, we're moving. Okay. Blocked in there. Oh, well, just steady as she goes, Kev, steady yeah. as she goes. That's perfect. And out she comes.
All right, leave it there for the moment. At this point, we need to think about supporting the horseshoe. Um, do you want to take a bit more weight on the crane? There we go. Whoa, 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 that'll do, that'll do. Now, we may find, so it's, you've, got the, you've got the big end supported, haven't you? That's supported. We might now find that we can actually just shuffle the horseshoe back. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a spring fit. It does kind of grab onto the... Give it a little tappy tap tap with the hide end. And with, the back end this me. makes quite a sharp noise from the blows that the microphone picked up, but we're actually using the hide end of the hammer here. Just check your, um, check your load on there. Lovely. Right, right, right. That's it. You've got it. Right. Kev? You yeah. Do you want to grab hold of that and just support it from or hold of the, or hold of the, the actual horseshoe as you like? And just support it from tilting down at the front when it comes off. Or oh, actually, I can pull it. You got it? You got it? Yep, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Come She's in. about to come off. It's, a, it's free. Wonderful. Wonderful. Perfect. Same problem as the other side. Oh, it's just dark. Oh, no, no, it's just, just. No, it's it's not actually. I think where it's stuck is the the front coming through the horseshoe. Yeah. Because it's a, it actually it's designed to be a little bit of a spring fit. Um, that's okay, that's okay. Can, can we push this forwards with the crosshead? Can you get it forwards? There we go. That's lovely, right, has the crane got it? Yeah, the crane's got it. Superb. That's what we're looking for. Okay, well that's safe now because it's just yeah, forwards onto the... Lovely, lovely. Excellent, it's safe. Um, <coughs> is that as far forward as that'll go? No. Uh, well, there's, there's no, not, not, not a huge amount. Nah, that's all right, that, that'll do. That's probably, that's probably enough. Okay, in which case, we might just be able to use the weight of this. To get the bearings out. Yeah, well, I mean, it would oh, also probably turn it 90 degrees and let him, you support it. I've got it here, and letting gravity just let it drop down. We can try that. We can try that. Because it's not going to damage fall down because you have to get. Well, there you go. That's it. There we go. The danger, of course, is, if, is it falling? It, it's dropping because <laughs> yeah. you haven't yeah. got a lot of tension on that, have no. you? No, and it's chuffing heavy. Yeah, I was yeah. Gonna say, that's okay. not. That'd be such a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we have to get it off one way or another, but it needs to be in a kind of controlled. We need to, we need well, to just put another piece of rope on that around. Put it around if here. you've got another piece, yeah. go and go and find another piece. Yeah. And just down here. Get the pin in. There we Perfect. Go. <laughs> That's lovely. Right. And then now, we'll put the rope around that. This, you think? Uh, well, the lovely thing about this is it cannot fall now. No. <laughs> That gets completely safe. Um, so what we can do, I've got the, there's a little portal power over there. So what we could do is just, and just spread it a little bit and it will yeah. just come down. So we can leave that there now, it's completely safe. And we can deal with this. And then do that afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've got a bit more room. I'm afraid the footage from here didn't come out very well. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't really possible to hold the camera and uh, manoeuvre anything safely to, uh, to get any good shots, I'm afraid. There are only the three of us working that day. So as you can see, we just lower the, um, the connecting rod down. That sort of slides down onto a, a, a board down on the ground. And then we, we deal with getting the, the remains of the horseshoe out. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. Hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.